the title of my talk is uh, about uh, the parents inequality and uh, uh, so this is the plan of my talk so we will review some basic uh, history of this uh, parents inequality and uh, then I will move to the case uh, considered in uh, this talk which is called the now parents inequality and uh, eventually we will discuss some about the proof okay so let's start from some basic uh, history so uh, uh, so the general relativity is found in 1950 uh, by Einstein and when he write down the Einstein uh, equation, okay, so which is uh, like this. Uh, and uh, soon after uh, uh, this equation is write down, Schwarzschild derived the, the uh, static spherical symmetric vacuum solution. Uh, uh, here, uh, it takes people a while to, real, uh, to fully understand this uh, metric. And uh, uh, the thing is that I is equal to 2M is a uh, very special, uh, which is not a singularity, but uh, a event horizon. Uh, uh, this can be seen very clearly from the uh, Kruskal uh, Zankaras coordinate. Um, so let's see this picture. So um, the important thing is the derivative of uh, the area radius uh, in the future now direction. Okay, so the space time is divided into three uh, regions. So one is the uh, exterior region uh, where the area radius, uh, which is like uh, the Euclidean space, which is uh, move, uh, increase in one direction and decrease in the other direction. And uh, then this is the black hole region uh, where this uh, red uh, point, they represent a trapped surface, which means uh, in both future and all direction, the area radius decrease. And the land, uh, the layer boundary is uh, the event horizon, which is I is equal to 2M. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, around this event horizon, so if you look at uh, the change of area radius, it uh, stay, uh, the area radius keeps constant in one future now direction. And it is called the marginal reach up surface, uh, which is an important uh, subject. Uh, uh, which we are considered in this talk. Uh, okay, so this is the definition. So chop surface and the marginal chop surface, uh, they are related to the, uh, the delivery of area element uh, in future now direction. Okay, so uh, if we want to uh, define some more uh, precisely, uh, uh, so we can look at the, uh, the now expansion. Okay, so uh, this is a two dimension space like surface and it has two uh, future now normal direction and the, the corresponding now expansion uh, will tell us whether uh, around this direction the area element increase or decrease. Okay, so, uh, so this concept of a closed chop surface is intru introduced by Penrose uh, in 1965 and uh, uh, use this concept he proved uh, his famous uh, incompleteness theory. Okay, another uh, important notation uh, is now infinite. And uh, so this is the uh, pair of diagram for the Minkowski space. And, uh, and this is one for the Schwarzschild. And you can see the black hole is the region which cannot commute with uh, future past and uh, future infinite. Okay. And uh, uh, based on these two concepts, one is the closed chop surface, the other is uh, uh, now infinite. Uh, so Penrose proved uh, the incomplete theory, which is there's, uh, the existence of a uh, chop surface uh, will imply uh, either a existence of a black hole or next singularity. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, so this is uh, uh, some basics about uh, uh, the geometry of a black hole. Uh, there are two things which is important. One thing is the uh, chop surface. The second is uh, now infinite. Okay, so uh, uh, the parallel inequality is about uh, the mass of a black hole and the mass of the total uh, universe. So uh, since in general relativity, the lack of symmetry, um, so the notion of mass is problem, uh, problematic. Uh, 
uh, but uh, uh, we are very lucky because for uh, black hole and uh, the mass of the total universe, we have well-defined uh, uh, mass notation. Okay, so, so first uh, Einstein studied the linearized field equation and uh, he predicts uh, the existence of a gravitational wave and uh, Bondi uh, uh, and the many others, they study the uh, axis symmetric solution. And uh, uh, in this solution, uh, uh, he defined uh, the uh, Bondi, he found a, a notation called the Bondi mass. Okay, of, of course, before this, uh, uh, a, uh, we have the ADM mass, okay. So this Bondi mass is defined at uh, now infinite. And uh, he found, uh, the bounding mass satisfies a very nice monotonicity uh, property, uh, which is the derivative of the bounding mass is captured by this news function. And uh, you can see uh, this sign is negative. So uh, when the bounding mass, when you uh, go into the future, uh, then the bounding mass is non-increasing. Uh, non okay, and uh, okay, so, uh, so when we consider uh, the mass of the total universe, we can either uh, consider the ADM mass at uh, a space like infinite or uh, the bounding mass at uh, now infinite. Okay, and uh, what's the mass for a black hole? Uh, so uh, in 1960, uh, Chris Duru, uh, introduced the concept of a irreducible mass. And uh, uh, the thing is, uh, this irreducible mass uh, will not uh, decrease uh, in any uh, process. And uh, uh, it's not the mass. Uh, uh, of course, it's, uh, uh, you can see uh, this is uh, for the curve black hole. And uh, this irreducible mass is not equal to the uh, total mass of the, uh, uh, the space time, which is uh, if L is unactive, this is strictly less than the total mass of the space time. And this formula for charge black. And the one deceive, uh, one important, one key uh, development. Uh, later is uh, uh, by Hawking, and he proved the uh, uh, the event horizon area cannot decrease in any process, even to black hole uh, price. Okay, so uh, and uh, the irreducible mass and the area of the event horizon has this very uh, simple uh, relation. So we can use the uh, event horizon area to define the mass of the black hole price. Okay, so. Uh, and uh, then uh, this is just uh, some historical uh, uh, comment, which this leads to the uh, the 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 celebrate uh, black hole thermodynamics. Okay. Okay. So now we can uh, discuss uh, what's the Penrose inequality and uh, his heuristic argument. So we can see the this picture. Uh, this is a picture of a uh, gravitational class, and. Uh, Suppose we have a marginally charged surface inside the black hole, and uh, then we go backwards in uh, and uh, consider its section with the event horizon. And it's reasonable to uh, to, to think that uh, the area of the uh, marginally charged surface is less or equal than the area of the this section. And uh, then uh, by the Hawking uh, area theory, so we can go. Uh, into the uh, space like uh, this is pi like uh, infinite. Okay, so then uh, the event horizon area will not uh, decrease. And uh, at uh, this point, uh, we hope the black hole inventory settles down to occur or occur numerical black hole. And at this point, uh, we have the area of the event horizon is, is less or equal than uh, 16 pi, uh, the total mass of the uh, space time, and then we go backward uh, in time on the now infinite. So, and uh, we have the inequality. Uh, uh, this is the less or equal than the mass at uh, the space like in, in infinite. Uh, infinite, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, we hope it converge to the ADM mass. Okay, so uh, this should be the heuristic argument of the parents. The inequality, and uh, you can think any of this, uh, uh, any two pair of this inequality uh, can be called the parent's uh, inequality. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, this parent's inequality 
uh, that's a very important case, which is proved uh, in the early of uh, in the beginning of this century, uh, which is uh, uh, by two groups of mathematicians. One is uh, Huston Yilman, and the other is uh, Brand. And uh, uh, they, their method is uh, different, and their conclusion is slightly different. Okay, so uh, the Huston Yilman they uh, they applied the, the weak inverse mean curvature flow. Uh, the idea is that we can connect uh, the boundary of black hole with the null internet by such kind of flow, or you can see, you can call it a variation, and the monotonicity of Hawking mass uh, can be proved on this variation. Okay. And uh, the uh, method by Brand, uh, he instead consider a variation in the space time. Uh, he consider uh, uh, like vary the matrix. So, so he didn't fix the matrix and uh, he considered the conformal deformation of the matrix. Okay, uh, and you will see uh, these two ideas are all uh, used in the proof of uh, the following null penalty inequality. Okay, so uh, what's the null penalty inequality? So let's see. Uh, we see the penalty inequality uh, if we can look at the two ends of the, this trend of inequalities. So uh, on the left-hand side, it's the area of the uh, marginal trap surface. And on the right-hand side, is the ADM mass at uh, the space-like infinity. Okay, uh, in uh, space-like uh, uh, infinite. Okay, so uh, the now penalty inequality is, uh, let's consider the bounding mass at uh, past now infinite. So we ask uh, whether for this boundary mass, we have similar uh, relation. So it's like uh, the uh, mass of or the area of the marginal trap surface is controlled by the uh, boundary mass uh, at here. Okay, so one comment is uh, uh, actually uh, this now penalty inequality um, uh, can imply the penalty inequality because uh, here, the uh, the bounding mass is uh, monotone non-decreasing, uh, so uh, we have the bounding mass here is less or equal than the ADM mass, ADM mass here. So uh, if we prove this now inequality, uh, we would also prove the uh, the, the original Penrose inequality. Okay, uh, maybe we can call the original Penrose inequality as a space-like Penrose inequality, a space-type Penrose inequality. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is a comment. Okay, so this is the uh, question we are interested in. So we have a marginal trap surface and we have a null type surface where this marginal trap surface fits in. And uh, we ask whether the uh, area of this the marginal trap surface can be controlled by the boundary mass of this null type surface at uh, the past null infinite. Okay. And uh, uh, let's look at uh, uh, the statement of the theory uh, uh, I proved. Okay, so, um, so this uh, uh, now penalty inequality um, at uh, present, uh, uh, we don't have uh, uh, like a general proof uh, in the general case. So here we just consider uh, we have a vacuum space I, uh, which is the perturbation of the Schwarzschild. So here we have a null half surface, and uh, this sigma zero is a marginal trap surface, and we can see a neighborhood of this uh, uh, null half surface because uh, we do, uh, we also don't want to assume we have a global perturbation of Schwarzschild. Uh, we just assume uh, this neighborhood of the null half surface is a perturbation of the Schwarzschild. Okay, so. Uh, so uh, we want to use some similar idea of Huisken and Newman. We want to construct some kind of variation, which is start from this marginal trap surface and go all the way to the past now instance. And we hope the Hawking mass uh, will be monotone non decreasing uh, around, uh, uh, around the variation. Okay. So this is done uh, by Sauter. Uh, in his thesis, he constructs uh, two kinds of such variation. Uh, where the Hawking mass is monotone non-decreasing. 
The first one uh, is called the constant null extension operation. And you can think this is uh, the analog of uh, inverse mean curvature flow in on non type surface. Um, and uh, the second one is uh, a little, is more involved, uh, which is called the constant mass effect function operation. Uh, it, uh, uh, it, it's defined, its definition involves this kind of mass effect function. Uh, at first sight, you might think uh, uh, why we need to consider uh, this function. Uh, and I will explain it later. Um, but uh, here I just see uh, this uh, operation, although it looks more involved, but it has some very nice features, uh, uh, very, some very nice analytic features. Okay. Uh, so, uh, of course, this mass effect function uh, does not come out from nowhere. So, first, uh, it's uh, introduced uh, in this paper, this um, linear memory factor uh, paper, and also uh, in the proof of global unlinear stability of the space. And uh, so, uh, we go through uh, uh, Salter's construction. So, he proved the uh, uh, on this formation, the Hawking mass is monotone non decreasing, right? So we have the uh, Hawking mass of this matter trap surface is less or equal than this limit. Okay, so uh, if this limit is equal to the bounding mass, then we are, uh, we are done. We get a proof of the null prime C first. And uh, somehow this problem is very tricky. So where the these two are equal. Uh, actually, in the 90s, 70s and 1980s, uh, they are some crazy proof of this null prime inequality. And uh, uh, they assume this is equal, they, they are equal. Uh, but uh, later people found uh, uh, this is uh, problematic. Okay, so uh, the problem is the came from the following, so uh, two pictures. So let's look at the picture on the left. So here we have a uh, this correlation, but this correlation is not around at uh, uh, now infinite. So when it goes to non-infinite, uh, uh, the geometry of this uh, formation is not wrong. Okay, so in this case, uh, this limit uh, has no uh, clear physical meaning. So uh, we don't know whether it will be uh, the bounding mass or not. Okay, uh, but uh, on the, in, for the picture on the right, uh, which is a very nice uh, uh, formation where the formation became round at uh, uh, now infinite. Okay, and for this uh, uh, formation, actually it defines a reference frame at uh, now infinite. And uh, this limit of this Hawking mass uh, will be the bounding energy uh, with respect to this frame. Okay, so now you can see uh, follow uh, this approach. Uh, to the, the obstacle of the proof comes from the geometry of the formation at uh, past now infinite. Okay, so uh, so then uh, uh, it's proposed by Kristuru and Salter that uh, uh, the following uh, approach to overcome the uh, this difficulty. So. Because uh, now you, you can see uh, this is uh, similar to the uh, idea of Brent uh, because he he tried to uh, like uh, perturb or you can see he tried to deform the space uh, the the manifold. Okay, so here um, we also want to do something similar. So uh, on this uh, now have surface, uh, the formation is not run at uh, non infinite. So uh, we we try to consider or perturb this uh, uh, now have surface a little bit. And uh, we hope uh, maybe by a perturbation uh, on a new now have surface, uh, this uh, uh, formation will be run at uh, half now infinite. Okay, so, uh, so to carry out this approach, of course, we need to study the perturbation of now have surface and also study the geometry of now have surface at uh, now infinite. Okay. So uh, yeah, so this is what I did. So I carry out this uh, project and uh, and uh, convince the layer uh, uh, intuition. So actually, uh, 
uh, the result is uh, pretty nice. Actually, we can we not only found one such kind of null hypersurface, we actually found a four parameter summary of homogeneous sharp surface. Uh, equal three is like four parameter of null hypersurface, and on this null hypersurface, uh, the operation actually became around at past null infinite. Uh, so if you look at uh, the uh, Hawking mass. So we have the Hawking mass of the marginal charm surface uh, will be less or equal than the Fondi energy uh, at uh, uh, personal infinite. Okay, uh, but we are not satisfied with this result because we know the energy can be, uh, so by changing reference frame, the energy can be arbitrarized, right? So uh, this result just proves something finite, well, less or equal than something which could be arbitrary. Uh, range, so it's not uh, so exciting. Um, so, but uh, we haven't used four stress of these four parameters. So, uh, actually, uh, uh, you, if if we want uh, to make sure this uh, uh, energy is the mass, we need to can see we need to choose uh, uh, the frame to be center of mass frame. And uh, this can be done. So actually, inside this four parameter memory, uh, you can find the one parameter memory of now have surface such that uh, the formation not only define a reference frame. Actually, the reference frame is the center of mass frame. So in that case, uh, the energy is the uh, mass. Okay. So eventually, we have this uh, result. So so uh, we don't want to start where we start. So in, uh, in the beginning, we have a marginal charm surface and we perturb it uh, a little bit and we found uh, uh, this one parameter family of uh, a marginal charm surface where uh, for length, the null parent inequality holds. But, uh, uh, but how about the starting point? So, so in this one parameter family, uh, actually, we can find at least uh, one marginal charm surface which has the same area with the original marginal charm surface. So uh, their bounding mass is the same. And for this uh, marginal charm surface, inside this one, one parameter family, we have the, uh, the null prince inequality uh, is true. So we have this. So the uh, Hawking mass of the original marginal charm surface is less or equal than uh, the bounding mass uh, but on other now have surface, uh, but we can go uh, to the space like infinite, uh, and uh, so we can prove this. So if the if our space tie is embedded in some uh, space uh, in some in some space tie, which we, uh, uh, which we like uh, um, the original now have surface, it's uh, um, the nearby uh, uh, space type of this uh, uh, now have a surface is a perturbation of the Schwarzschild. So then uh, we have the uh, Hawking mass is less or equal than the ADM mass of the space. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. This is the 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 the, the, the yeah. This is the result. Um, I proved. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, uh, some of the idea in the proof. Okay, so first, uh, of course, we need to study the geometry of null half surface. And uh, this is done uh, in the following way. So we can see that on a null half surface, we have a certain variation. Okay, so uh, associated with this variation, we can define the so called uh, uh, structural coefficients and uh, can also decompose the, uh, uh, the, the curvature tensor. Okay, so now uh, uh, this set of uh, quantities, they are called structural coefficients because they are related to the um, covariant derivative of the frame. Okay. And uh, you can think uh, they are the first order quantity because uh, somehow they are like the Christopher symbol, which is the derivative of the metric. Okay. And uh, we also have the decomposition of uh, curvature uh, uh, tensor. Okay. So you can think there are second order quantities. Okay. So uh, 
So we consider the uh, constant mass fx function for uh, which is like uh, 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 which the mass fx function is defined like this. And uh, uh, you can see uh, if we take the integration of this function, it will be related to the Hawking mass. Okay, so if we take the integration, uh, it's related to the Hawking mass. So I think that's the reason why it's called the mass aspect function. And the, the constant mass aspect function for is simply this function is a constant on each leaf of the operation. Okay. Okay, so uh, to study the geometry of the now hype surface, uh, we use this uh, uh, formation. And uh, the important thing is for this formation, we have the so-called structural equation, uh, which related to, uh, which relate, uh, connect the uh, uh, structural coefficient with, with the curvature component. So, okay, so if we parameterize this uh, formation by area radius, and the length, uh, the structural equation consists of two sets of uh, equations. The first set, uh, it's uh, the first set is a propagation equation, uh, which if you look at the null extension, so that derivative is given uh, uh, by this equation. Okay, so uh, the equation eleven is uh, uh, quite important for our analysis because if you look at uh, the right hand side, if we uh, consider the constant mass aspect function for then this mu is a constant. So then when we take the derivative of this equation, so the derivative of mu just vanishes. So uh, yeah, so this is the, 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 the benefit of this uh, formation. So it's like uh, uh, for this equation 11, uh, if this is constant, it gives us a uh, uh, very good uh, uh, analysis uh, like uh, so when we estimate this trace cat, uh, it will be very useful. Okay, and the second set is the elliptic equation. Okay, so they form a coupled system. So we will use this system to study the geometry of the uh, now have surface. Okay. Okay, so uh, so when we try to perturb the now have surface, so uh, we ask uh, how the geometry of the formation change with respect to the perturbation, right? So uh, we make use of a double null coordinate system. So consider here this is the double null coordinate system and the list sigma zero zero, uh, which is the original margin chop surface we start uh, from. Okay, so um, we try to preserve the null half surface. So how we uh, describe the perturbation? So uh, we can consider a family of now uh, of uh, surface inside this uh, outgoing uh, now have surface, which is like we actually we first perturb this sigma zero zero in this outgoing now direction. Okay, so you can describe it by one function. So it's like uh, you 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 disturb uh, you disturb this uh, uh, margin chop surface a little bit, but only in the outgoing now direction. Okay, so for each this uh, uh, surface, you can consider the corresponding now half surface. And then you can construct the, the marginal, uh, you can construct the formation on this now half surface. Okay, so uh, on each now half surface, we have the least uh, formation, uh, which is constant mass aspect function formation. So our question is, um, how the geometry change with respect to this uh, uh, parameter p? Okay, so so this is the problem, right? And uh, uh, if you uh, so in general, this is quite difficult to describe. But in the short uh, uh the perturbation is actually pretty nice. If you consider the linearized perturbation, uh, actually it's a linearized operator. Uh, it's uh, diagonalizable. So we can see the, the spherical harmonics on the sphere. And uh, if you look at the Gauss curvature of the formation, so then you can see the uh, it's linearized uh, perturbation, which is uh, this is the 
uh, linearization of the uh, perturbation of the Gauss curvature at uh, now infinite. And you can see uh, this can be uh, calculated explicitly. And uh, if you look at this uh, 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 list component, it tells us if lambda L is equal to zero, which is uh, corresponding to the constant uh, uh, function, or if lambda L is equal to two, which corresponding to the first eigen uh, space of the Laplace. So this uh, linearized perturbation uh, is equal to zero. So which means this operator, uh, which we, uh, has untrivial kernel. So actually, uh, the kernel of this linearized uh, perturbation uh, is this uh, constant function and the first eigenspace of the Laplacian. Okay. So actually, this four dimension space corresponding uh, to the four parameter family, which we stated in the theory. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, the last thing is uh, uh, I want to discuss is how we perturb the marginal charge surface, right? Because we always uh, we, we care about the, the area of marginal charge surface, not the actual surface. Okay, so uh, the question is, uh, uh, give me the space type, and here we have a marginal charge surface. So how to find uh, all the nearby charge, marginal charge surface uh, here? So this is the neighborhood of the original minor trap surface. Uh, we want to find uh, all the other uh, minor trap surface nearby. Okay, so this is the question. And uh, so, uh, so suppose uh, we draw an actually space-like surface uh, here. So how we prematurize this minor trap uh, this surface? Okay, so it can be determined by two sets of wood. Data. The first one is uh, 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 so we consider the now hyper surface where this sigma uh, is embedded in. So if we know uh, if we know uh, the position of this sigma inside this now hyper surface, and second, if we know the position of this now hyper surface, we would know the position of sigma. Okay. So uh, it's uh, parameterized by two functions. One function is this function f uh, tells us, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, 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 this function f tells us how, uh, where the, uh, where this sigma is located inside this now have surface. The second function f bar tells us uh, where is this now have surface. Okay. So uh, in order to find the uh, marginal charge surface, we only need to solve this equation. So uh, this is the outgoing now extension of this sigma. So uh, its matter trap surface uh, is equivalent to uh, this now extension is equal to zero. And we can think this now extension uh, is a functional uh, which takes in values on, uh, yeah, with, uh, of f and f bar. Okay. So uh, what's the formula of this uh, now extension? So you can see uh, let's, uh, uh, in this special case, you will see the feature of this uh, uh, now extension. So uh, this is the structural state type. And we just can see the, uh, we uh, perturb this sigma zero zero in this uh, incoming direction. So, so it means F, F bar is equal to zero. So we only perturb it uh, inside the, this uh, now have surface. And you will see uh, the trace type, the null extension actually is the elliptic uh, operator. So for F. Okay. So uh, eventually, uh, what you need to do is uh, solve an elliptic equation. Okay. So the final result, uh, so we can finally answer this question. So how to find uh, all the marginal trap surface? Okay. So, uh, so whenever you give me a null half surface nearby, uh, which is the current to give the F bar. So we can always solve the uh, equation to get a marginal trap surface uh, inside the list uh, now has. Yeah, so, yeah, so, 
yeah, so this is the, the, the you can think uh, this is the moderate space of the moderate space of the madron chapter. Uh, so in the threshold, uh, this question is of course trivial because uh, uh, all the matrix factors they, so they are located on the event horizon. So, and we know the event horizon is a non half surface, which any section of it is a matrix half surface. But uh, in general, it's not the case. Uh, if we consider a perturbation of structural space time, uh, uh, all the matrix half surface they don't correlate a single uh, half surface. Okay, and you can show actually uh, if all the uh, uh, matrix half surface they do correlate a single uh, half surface, then this must be like this half surface must be not. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, so I discussed the uh, three uh, aspects of the proof, uh, but there are some more uh, difficulties uh, in the proof. For example, uh, we just described the linearized perturbation uh, in the structural space type, but uh, if we are considered a perturbed structure, uh, then this operator, uh, the linearization of the Gauss curvature, uh, this next structure of the kernel and the core kernel is not preserved. So, uh, so, so uh, it's a problem to, yeah, so we need to overcome this uh, difficulty. So how to, uh, how to uh, make use of the linearization uh, for a uh, perturbed structure. And the second uh, uh, difficulty, I think uh, for me, I feel, I feel it's more uh, severe uh, because uh, uh, eventually we want to make use of some idea of uh, implicit function theory or inverse function theory, but we cannot apply this directly because of this loose of regret. Uh, so we, we need to overcome this problem. Okay, so the last one is uh, uh, I didn't mention anything about how to choose the center of mass pressure. Okay, so this is another uh, difficulty. Uh, so because uh, uh, the center of the center of mass frame, uh, actually you can think uh, this is the linear uh, linear momentum is equal to zero. Right? So uh, the linear momentum is a three dimension uh, uh, vector. So so we need to eliminate uh, this linear momentum uh, by using uh, this four parameter family. Okay, so so the remaining parameter is this one parameter. Okay, so this is another this is the another uh, difficulty we need to overcome. Okay, so uh, uh so basically this is the end of my talk, and here I would like to list the same reference. So for the mass aspect function, you can refer to these three uh, uh references, and uh, for the uh now inequality. Uh, of my approach of uh, so the approach of uh Christuru, Salter, and uh, me. Okay. So uh this is the uh thesis of Salter, this is my thesis, and this is a later development. And uh, for this now parents inequality there's another approach which is by uh Roche Henry and uh, he constructs uh some kind of new uh quasi local mass but also inspired by the mass S function and uh, he has another approach. Okay. And this is the end of my talk. Uh, thank you. Yeah.